testing, testing, testing. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been 12 months I haven't had any videos. I'm here back and I'm here with some new information. I'm back with new tutorials. I'll be more focusing about React application and smart contracts. So if you're interested in building your next decentralized application, join this channel. So these videos are not really structured. They're more on a free base. I'm going to start building the knowledge that I have consumed around and start layering them in videos. Hopefully I can structure them in a very well explained way. But bear with me if I have to go back to some of my notes and explain you um, in detail something twice. So my main goal of these videos is to explain you React and as I mentioned smart contracts. Um, I will start with React. I will explain, of course, uh, what in React what JSX means, what's a pure function, the detail that you need to, to actually write you know, React uh, application. But I also like to show mainly around toolings I use. Um, I think there's a lot of video tutorials on how to build a React app, but it's not that much as what tools you currently use in the industry. And I've worked for some of the big players in the market. I work for bankings, I work for different crypto firms. There's lots of tools they use, uh, and these are industry standard tools, I think, which you should know and be ready when you're going in a job uh, for one of these big players. Now, let's start with React. There's a lot of introduction of how React is. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of understanding of where React came from. You get these calls from recruiters saying, hey, how long have you been, uh, how long do you have experience in React? And you can hear them, they go, oh, we're searching for someone that is you now 10 years experience. I'm like, that's fine, but React was not invented. So, in 2010, we have Facebook launching XHP for PHP, and it is outsourced. It's the, basically the beginning of React, showing the shapes and forms. Um, in 2011, we have Jordan Walk, and he introduces FactsJS. And then in 2012, React has actually created their first React library, but is it used internally. And in 2013, this is where finally a public sees what React is, and it's been demoed in one of the conferences. The next following years, React develops slowly. We have different kind of issues. There's a, a, a big barrier of, of fighting against Angular projects, and the market really is trying to figure out which path to choose. And that is due to have a, you have a strong community on Angular side with all the documentation, but at the same time, you have React that's developing and developers are getting used to the new changes that are coming out. Now, the two big things that are popular in the timeline is 2017 and 2019. 2017 is when React launches Fiverr, or basically, it's when they rewrite the whole uh, React. And 2019 is when we launch Hooks. Now, basically, for the past three years, Hooks have uh, been seen everywhere. Aye, aye, Captain! As a React developer, what you will see is when you join companies, you have an old school way of doing it, and then they'll be asking you, hey, do you know React Hooks? The good thing about React is it's very open-minded. You don't have really opinionated way of doing it. Um, I've seen React developed in every shape or form. Now, when I, ask, when I always hear a React product, I'm always interested to see how they developed it because I'm more interested on the architecture they've chosen. What I loved about Angular is that they had a lot of good principles of uh, folder structures, responsibilities division, Whereas React, you have to choose your own data validation, you have to choose your, which way you want to use your routing, um, you have uh, data management. These are all principles that you need to set before you start a project. Or as a developer, you come in and if you're the first one, you basically set them as your own. And then the next one developers follow you. There's also a big question about state management. You can use your Flux uh, patterns, you can have a, a GraphQL that manages the state for you. You can basically encode all your states you know, in one of the containers and then just pass them over to the children. There's different ways, again, of doing it. I'll show you what I've seen mostly common in these projects. Um, I'll show you what I prefer myself. It's just I like to have my code separate in responsibilities. I like it when it's structured and you can follow a, some kind of a, a clear pattern. So that's a little history about React. Let's move on to actually development. Now, the first thing I'm going to start with, you need to build, how do you build a React application? There's two ways of building it. Well, two ways that I know how to build it. One way is, of course, you can go to the React app and you can do the npx 
create Angular application, or for create, npx create React application. Now that will give you just core standard React uh, application, uh, and that's where normally a lot of people let's first start in. My preferred tool is a, a my preferred tool is using NX tool. Now NX tool, the difference of it is it's basically a wrapper CLI, and it allows you to add create applications very quickly and it, and it links you up all the the fiddly thing that you normally do with a base clean uh, react app so instead of you trying to figure out how to add storybook um, or changing um, or adding creating another application nx tools allow you to do that so with a command line you can generate another application with a command line you can generate your end-to-end -end testing it's there out of the box it helps you a lot of things that you shouldn't fiddle about. As a junior developer, you'll go ahead and, and crack on with the basic React uh, application and then maybe you want to go in depth and, and, and mess around setting up your own storybook a pain that I don't see why people should be doing around. What you should be is learning how to progress in writing tests, writing code, instead of figuring out how to fiddle of just connecting the, the plugin or extension code. So, I have my screen, which let me I will share in a minute. So this is what I was talking about, the React application, you can go on the React app and you get started. And you have the, I wish the React had a better documentation to be honest. So let's get started. I will try to already have the command line on first link. I think, yeah, you see it doesn't, the first thing you want to do is to, to show the command line and this is what I believe React is lacking. Documentation could be better. Um, let me see where the create, uh, create React app is. So this is where it comes to this is where it comes to me typing in in Google and trying to find it this way. You see it; it's under the docs create new app, and here again things React can improve with documentation, but can't blame them. Um, so, this is the normal command you would use to create a uh, React application, which is great. Um, NX tooling, which is this, what I was talking about, is the CLI that allows you to create applications. Now, we're going to use this tooling. I, pre I prefer it a lot better. I'm mentioning why. It gives you a lot of benefits. Great, I'm here. Now, I'm going to create a workspace. You need to install the following packages. Go ahead. Uh, workspace name. Let's call it uh, JavaScript Buddy. Now, what type of application to install? So this is the thing about it. You can install also a Node, um, a Node Express API on the workspace, and you don't have any headaches. So you can have your monorepo of your React front-end app. You can have your um, your Node Express there. It's all in one repo. Uh, yeah, JavaScript Buddy. So that's my application name. That's the workspace. I would call it Web UI, maybe better. So Web UI is the app. For now, I'm happy with style components. I'll explain you different ways of styling it. No, I don't want to share any details right now. And it's installing the dependencies. Now, when the thing is installing, you're gonna have your basic workspace, and you're gonna have your app, and you're gonna have your end-to-end -end tests. There's also a big question I want to talk about testing. Um, being in the industry for now for 12 years I've seen every company have different standards for testing and you're lucky enough if they have actually those standards and if they don't you should always push forward as a developer to have these standards if we talk before this while this is installing let's talk about testing so if I write in testing testing pyramid Because, as I said, these videos are not structured, but I like to go off topic. So this is your normal normal testing kind of pyramid. And what they say is, you have a lot of unit testing, then you have a lot of integration tests, and then you have a little bit of end-to-end -end tests. Whoever invented this is good at, you know, uh, was maybe trying to sell unit tests. But it is an experience. Uh, I'll tell you honestly. It doesn't work, and I'll tell you why. 
let's say you're a fresh new product, yeah? You started just a fresh new product, you're in Greenfield, Shebang, you start coding, and you start writing a test. The thing is, your product owner is normally someone very creative. Your product manager is also creative and gets pushed from the client with a lot of changes. So, really, it's a feature. Uh, you're coming back in the next bit and say, hey, let's change this around. You change your code, your unit test breaks. You have to fix your unit test, you have to fix the code. And this is where the issue starts. You basically are spending a lot of time of refactoring or creating these, updating or tweaking your feature and then writing the unit test on top of it. Now, people don't know what the difference between these three tests is. A unit test is basically testing your small unit of code, so uh, what you pass into the function and what returns. An integration test, you know, it tests the best uh, if you've not broken anything before. Um, and end-to-end -end test is where you test, you know, where the users click through the pages, the flows. Now, normally what you see is your unit test, there's a language called Jest or Cypress. You, you basically, uh, you're testing your function, uh, where you're listening to it, and then integration tests. Um, and then you have the integration test, and then end-to-end -end test, you again, you can write it with Cypress, um, you can have it with Cucumber. It's basically where you test as the user goes to a page, clicks X, Y, Z, and then sees X, Y, Z. Why am I saying this is wrong? As I mentioned before, unit tests fail a lot. And it's because code changes a lot. It's a dynamic thing. It's always progressing. It's not a, a statically built and shipped out. What I believe is unit tests should be tested the smallest thing. You need to test only the core um, mapping or logical functions or kind of business service layers would do, do very little testing. So let's say you're doing some calculations that you know if you make it wrong, test them. Very small. Have the most of it, I believe it should be reverse pyramid. And I don't know if there is a thing called that reverse. Yeah, there is. This is what I'm talking about. The reverse pyramid. So this is where you have end-to-end -end tests covering most of it. So you would, what your end-to-end -end test will be testing is you know, the flow. So when a new feature comes out or you're updating the feature, the flow won't change that much. You may have new buttons, you may have new features, you may have creating a new directory, a new product, and now you add your new end-to-end -end test. So that one failed. So focus mostly on your end-to-end -end test. When you start writing, when you join a new project, write end-to-end. -end. Make sure all the flows work because what happens is when you deploy it, you have a manager or someone that goes online and starts clicking through and going, hey, a flow is broken. So very literally says, hey, um, a spelling or the button is misaligned somewhere. Those are talking about tests and I will go more deeper about tests into another video. Back to, back to building the React application. So here is my React application and I can see it's finished. So I have a workspace called JavaScript Buddy. Okay, great. So this is opened um, the workspace and it looks similar, but I totally changed. So you have apps and libs. The difference between apps and libs, libs are your external code that you're trying to introduce into all your applications. Now, as you can see, we have web UI, we have web UI E2E. Straight so away, you have your end-to-end -end test links. You can start building on top of it. And then you have your React application. Any React application, as you know, let's go into the project. You just do npm run start, and that will kick off the project, which is doing the NX serve. It builds, and um, you see straight away your URL that you need to you can access it. Now this is the UI, the generated the default UI of the tooling. Now what I want to do is before we go any deeper to React, I'm explaining the basics a little bit, a little tiny on top of it. So. This is the, the core file. So what happened is React needs to boot up a file. It always takes one file to boot up and then it links up the rest of them. Now the, the React file that is booting up is your app TSS file. Now what you want to do is you can see here, this is where I want to explain you what React does, but basically it takes in um, your app and this is where it boots up the file. So it gets it gets, it takes the index file, 
it loads the JavaScript, it reads the, it reads the ID of the HTML, it's here, and it starts adding, you know, it starts manipulating with the DOM. Before we go any deeper with this, I want to explain you the basics of it. Now, first thing in basics, let me just delete. So, let's talk about basics. I need an online editor. So, basic folder, all I want is an index.html file. There you go. Now, index.html file is just going to say test. Now, what if I do is I open that index file here. There you have an index file. Now, let's just do the basic HTML. Don't worry, it's not going to be that boring, but you need to understand the structure of what's happening. Otherwise, if you don't get this, then it becomes difficult to understand later. Yeah? Great. I'll explain you more in detail. If I go into Inspect Element, and um, you know, so console, you can access things. If I just do React, ah, that's developer tools, yes, yes, but I don't want that. If I just do React, it says React reference error, so React is not defined. For React to work, it needs to be in the scope or it needs to be in the browser. Simple as that. You're using the React library, that's why it is a library, and you're using it all its functions to get stuff done. How do you do it? So, in the CDN links, you can import React. So let's go here. So you can get these packages from the CDN. React development, I imported it here, right? Let's go back to the index file, refresh it, and let's do React. Bang, we have React. This is everything we need for now. You might ask, what's the next thing, the development thing? For React to manipulate the DOM, you need the next library, React DOM. And then, of course, you need script. Basically, you need, you need to start doing a text JavaScript. You need to start writing your, 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 your JavaScript, right? Because React is JavaScript, basically. It's all JavaScript. Now, going from React basics to React, what it is. So, before you had JavaScript and then you had jQuery, you manipulate the DOM by document get element by ID, you do query selectors, and you know you update the DOM left and right. Hence why you have now a lot of React developers that moved from pure JavaScript into React because manipulating the DOM is very easy and you can control the lifecycle hooks. It's a tooling that helps you get st stuff done. Right, so what do I want to 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 to, to explain now? So this is this is fine. Now React create element. See, create element's already there. Uh, is basically what I need. Before okay, so let me start talking about basic stuff. Let's say we have a, let's say we have an h1 heading, we have a div with hello world, this is react, you can, if you see my code jumping, there's a formatter jumping around, um, you always need a formatter set up. So here's your static HTML that's been rendered. You can see it's an H1 and a body. Now what you want to do is you want to create that static into dynamics. How do you do that with React? There's two things. So in React, now that we have it in scope, React create element is what actually creates what is said, it creates an element. You what it does is you pass in a type. Now the type can be H1, button, div, whatever you want, yeah? Then you pass in its props, and the next one you pass in its children. Three things it needs. So, let's replace it. What do we need to do? We want a, we want a H1, right? Props, 
we can have a class name which can be main heading children for now let's leave it back children for now let's see what we want is we want just a text inside saying main oh instead of just main heading just put heading so the text we want so we basically want to replace the static one with a dynamic one great so we have a create element did anything change no let's change this if it's actually working ts nothing is changing why because you need the next thing which i was talking about is the react um, dom manipulation so you need react dom dot render you pass in now this is an element that was created you need to reference it let's create the reference um, const main heading beautiful now we pass in this one here and now what the render needs it actually says well give me an element where should I append it to so this is where you get old school document get element by id and now you need an id pass in so this is where you actually create here div you do id and let's say root Just root of it now I need to pass in root beautiful so what's happened here one line is creating me an HTML markup the second one is taking it and rendering that's what React is doing for me if I refresh now add it there there's a console of issue Unref React DOM is not defined ay 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 must be missing let me see the React DOM my dum 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 so it's not defined because the spelling is a little bit different which is as you see react dom is a capital so capital there you go now this should work let's go back target container is not a dom element Okay, react error is still there. Let me do react dom. React dom r. What am I doing here? R. Goodbye r. No. Right. Why is it not picking up? Okay, so the issue is, I believe it's, let me see this. Logical. You load the two scripts, you reload the HTML, and then you need the JavaScript picked up. Let me see if that's working. It is. So great. So we need to read the DOM first to pick it up. There's my JavaScript. What I look at what it's done. It's taken the div element, it's actually created an H1 tag with a class main heading and passed in, appended it, or injected it, whatever you call it. So now I can actually remove my H1. Goodbye. Beautiful. So this is dynamically created. We have done this. No templating, no headaches. Well, what about me creating the next element? Well, let's create this div. So what do we have here? We have, we need to, we want to pass in, what do we want to pass in? We want to, we want to create two elements inside of one. So let's create a number const, let's set a section. And let's do this react. Oh, I'm too lazy. I'm just gonna copy this, paste it here. Oopsie. And let's change it. So div. I don't want a class name for now. Do I in class? Ah fine. Let's call it section. So what do I want to do? I want to have a div. And what I actually want to do is so I I'll have a heading and i want another one which is maybe a paragraph so let's do main paragraph it's going to be a p tag main body stuff got real and now my main section is what i want to do is i want to actually import the children so let's do that i want to import the main heading and I would like to import the main paragraph. In the main section, I want to import it here. Do you see how it groups? There you go. And now, if I go stuff real, look at that. 
I've got main heading, stuff got real. Ah, I need to remove this bit. Main section, the heading, and body. So I'm starting to build, with create elements, you know, start nesting things. This is this is how React renders a DOM. You know, this is how it gets the element, passes it in. From basics, it's great. You can now, from this, we can actually move into uh, and create a view. Let's say we return basically a view and then we pass in the view, yeah? So, great, we have this functioning, but if we look at the code, you now we're creating elements. What about if I, let's go to the basics back. Let's say, I, I'll comment this out. What happens if I take my main section and it returns me a, so let's have your main section and let's say it returns me a div with this is great. Yeah? And I pass in here. What's going to happen? Unexpected token. So it doesn't know what to do. You need to actually, this is, this is where the SAS logic starts to, you know, needs to sink, sink in. You need a compiler. This is what JSX is about, is it's taking this view and rendering it into the elements. And to render it, we need one library right now because we're not using React. We need a compiler and that we can use is Babel. Go online again. This is the kind of, it's just a Babel uh, compiler and you introduce it here, script. Is it the whole thing? No, it's not. Script, uh, source, beautiful, script. Beautiful, now we've imported Babel. Now what we need to do is, tell oh, this JavaScript little thing. Hey, JavaScript, Babel, work with this, work with me. Look at that. Babel is now taken it, transformed it for me and go, hey, let me transpile it for you. Look at that. I've created a view. This is the basicest thing. I've assigned a view here, and I put it in here. Babel took care of it, just filed it, bang, I have it. Your mind starts going, woo, this is cool. And then you get these Cabo React developers that start building anything they want. Right, next step. Now that we have this, it will be great to create a view. So let's create a view actually. This is great to returning a, you know, you render a string, you render the markup. What about uh, creating actually a view? Because all React is, is basically, is just, uh, you have functions that are returning views. You're mapping some data and it returns a view. It's so simple, hence why people love it. Love React just using a day-to-day -day basis. So, let's turn this into basic. Uh, let's have something like this. Now, the thing you need to have is React dot fragments fragment. fragment fragment I call it a fragment this is where react takes care of the view now what do we need here is let's say let's do ABC a div great and let's have this main section now returning us a view it's working beautiful why am I doing that because a the fragment allows me to return multiple divs. I mean, when children have another div inside. So before having, you need the fragments to wrap up your div element so it knows. Otherwise, it's like when you do JavaScript, pet, you need to have uh, the container of the divs or the elements inside of it. And fragments allow you to not have bloated divs. Um, bloated divs, what I mean is, Instead of you going here and wrapping this into a, a div and then having a div here and, and then when you export it you have you know divs inside of you have you have nested divs and off no you don't need it, it doesn't make sense, you know. So fragment is just keeping it clean and then no, you're not safe. And then you have it, if I go body, div, there you go, both elements are here. Very clean, very simple. Now I have a view returning. This is the basics of, I hope, if there's anything more deeper you want in detail, um, there's tons of people online that will explain it to you um, in terms of YouTubes. I just wanted to take this care because I want to move into actually developing React things and I hopefully that you understand 
how the DOM gets rendered, what JSX is really is. Um, I couldn't really see or find information to explain it to me when I was um, learning this a couple of years back. It, I always, the mindset always, oh, JSX, yeah, it's just, uh, everything is JavaScript. Um, but, you know, this step-by-step -step understanding that, hey, you need React, you need it, it needs to be in a scope, or it needs to be in a browser, uh, you import development, you improve the DOM uh, manipulation, uh, this library takes care of manipulating the DOM, this care of, you know, inter, in, into, uh, implementing the into scope, and then you have Babel that basically takes it and, and, and compiles it for you. Um, yeah, you get a grasp of it. Okay, so if we go back, and uh, we have uh, importing it, so this is great. Now what I want to do is I want to open a workspace. Back to our JavaScript stuff. Right, after a little block of, of, of studies, hopefully this is not too much, let's go into the basics. Web UI. Our favorite thing that we started with is at TSX, at TCX TypeScript. Um, and then as you can see, you have these views. So remember we uh, did document element by ID. And this is where this is where React will take, this you have your default HTML, of course, and then you have all of the thing already set up here. No need to import the libraries, no need to figure out about the compiler. Um, but it will take the ID root and it will import it. This is the default one. So you can see here's a function of it. But if I go to main TSX, there's my document renderer. So it takes the core root and it finds the document element ID and it takes this view. It's got strict mode which is something that app takes us released here. Um, let me see what it does. Fine. Not right now what I want to talk about, but this is where it pulls in the app. And this is the app uh, first function. And then of course it pulls in one of the children which is NX welcome, which is the whole markup you saw here. Before, where was it? Here. Now, the thing that they have here is that, hey, here's a function. It shows you how they're already passing in data into that function. Um, there's a fragment, so you can use react.fragment. Fragments, fragment. I need to learn to pronounce properly. Um, it's got its styling here. Dangerously set inner HTML, like that they're being humorous. Um, instead of they could have shown a bad example of how to do it properly. But what do we do? Um, let's delete this. Let's not confuse ourselves with bad habits. Um, out, out, clean, beautiful, I love clean stuff. Oh, row and sign in React. You are importing your main component. You, in your main component, you have, you need to choose between your libraries, your root libraries, and that's where you set different routes for, for loading different uh, features. In React, they call them pages. In Angular, they call them features. Um, it's just a naming convention. You call them pages. My thing you understand is when you're building an app, you need to understand between a smart and a dumb component. Having a, a smart component is, or a container component is a component that talks to the state. So um, if you want to become a professional developer, always think about co um, having responsibilities for each of your uh, classes, your components. Um, a container is responsible for fetching the data and then passing the the data to a dump component. Your dump component's responsibility is only to render. And then you start building a UI library where you have all your dump components, and that's where Storybook comes in. And what's a Storybook? Storybook is basically a library that allows you to have this beautiful demo of your dump components. Right, so let's kick off and let's build something fun here. Now, a good structure here would be let's create a dashboard, right? And let's create a file here called dashboard.tsx. A dashboard. So you've got a file, what do you do? Remember, import React uh, from in the scope. So you have React. Create. Let's, so we're returning a view and let's return just a div. 
and let the div say hello. And then let's import that into our application. We can have it here, a dashboard, and close it off like this. So now it's showing the red because what you need to do is you need to import that uh, file the using. Everything is linked. So dashboard from dashboard, dashboard, beautifully. So let's hopefully that works. Localhost 4000, hello, where's my hello? Ah, look, hello, how dumb of me. Once you're building React, don't forget the so the plugin components, it's from React from uh, extension. Right, not picking up that sound. So React extension is the extension for you to create your components. Now, what you are gonna do here is, go. Oh, it's still the plugin, and then basically you see all that. Let me close this baby, and this one, and this one. Uh, there you go. And you can see the components that you're actually creating. I'm still like old school, uh, using my elements. Right, so you have the function here. Now let's talk about a little bit manipulating data. Let's say we have a const of um, fruits. Yeah, boring, but hopefully save me. So let's say we have apples, uh, banana, banana, or any better glasses, um, cherry, anyway, stuff like that. So what do you want to do? You want to, as I said, it's all in rec about taking a uh, object data, manipulating a little of them, and then what you're doing is you're looping through objects and you're creating these views and then you're mapping the view back. So how does that do? So you can have, let's say it returns you like this, a view. Let's say we have so let's say here we want to go to so let's say let's return this. So how do you before actually going to objects, I think Hopefully you guys understand. So let's say we have const and we have um, a, some kind of some kind of line that says hello. Now, how do you display this data? Uh, it's using these braces, go line, and we'll actually render it. So hello, hello, double hello. Let me remove that so you can see that. Now it will return you hello. Now this is the string. Let's work with objects, with data objects. So let's say we have fruits. Now we take this and we want to, my editor, my prettier, always prettify things. So what I want to do is, it's an object. As you know, an array, uh, everything in JavaScript is an object. So let's say we have here, let's create a const of, as I said, the same thing, fruits, it's easier. And then we have a, b, C, right? It shows first you undefined, but if you console log it out, uh, fruits, you get the thing, the list. Now, if I type in fruits, you can see it's an array below. I can, every the array object has um, its, uh, its props, which basically allows me to do things with that object. And one of them I can do is called map, and I can take every item in that uh, object and I can do something and I can a map basically will take every element and return it replace it with something else so I can say replace it with item plus uh, number one and then as you can see I have now a1 b1 c1 so you can do things with it what I want to do is I want to take every um, name of it and I want to render it so that way I can but I want to render it in let's say in a div tag so it's, I can do map and then do every element in the item. And I want to return basically a div where the element is shown. Right? Now, if we go back to here, oh, of course, element is not into my uh, curly braces. It gets shown here. Now, the thing about when you're mapping things, you'll get an error in React, which is basically when we talk about rendering DOM. So, how does React do it? React, uh, when it renders a list, it has a reference to each element. Uh, it, that rose references is 
you need to have a unique key uh, to for you to know which one to render correctly. Be very careful. So let's say we have these elements. You can have a account which you can do, for example, uh, index. And then if you put an index, basically it will put, that object will put out saying. Uh, where is this? There it is. So let's say he'll say one, two, three, and it basically will give you the list of, uh, will give you the index of the item in the array. But it's not a good thing. Um, it's not the right way of doing it because when it updates the the element, the item in the in the array may be different. So every time you manipulate it, um, one, uh, so apple, which is number one in the array may not be a number one, it could be number two, and then it get confused with the rendering. So what you want to do is, it's good to set in the key, either the name, which is again not the best thing. So you can do key, and you can do element, and that will keep it unique. So, so now that the key value disappears, and that's basically it. That's the basic part. Um, I would say that's part one of the video. I hope it went um, smoothly enough um, and it's clearly explained. So we talked about setting up NX tooling. Uh, we talked about how React renders the DOM. We talked about firstly creating a first first comp first function or first uh, view and returning it. You we start a little introduction on uh, manipulating with data objects. So we have an array and how we can map through it and then return a view. I think for first lesson that's a good that's a good start. It gives me time to grab another coffee, take a little break, come back and start talking about the next lesson. Um, I think now I'm going to talk about functions and I think a good introduction to hooks. I hope you liked the first bit, let's move on to the next bit.